open at three. Let's have a chat with Ian Mansfield before I come to your calls on this. Uh, Ian is Head of Education and Science at the Policy Exchange, former Special Advisor at the Department for Education. Ian, great to have you with us. Let's start, shall we, with... I, I think what's quite a surprising finding, actually that even fines aren't deterring 50% of par- 57% of parents from taking their kids out of school simply to go on holiday. What do you make of that? Yeah, so this is something we've been looking at at Policy Exchange. And the thing is, the thing that's really driving the school absence crisis is not so much parents taking kids out in in term time, which has always happened a bit. It's really the breakdown of trust and that big breakdown of that almost sort of pact between schools and parents that happened during COVID. So beforehand, you know, government had been saying every day matters and so forth. But it's really hard to persuade people of that again when you've ended up shutting school for months at a time. And that's not something which we're going to be able to get back quickly. Is, is that not, I mean, tell me what you think of this, but the everyday matters argument, I struggle to buy it. I struggle to buy that if a kid admits five days of school to go on holiday, particularly towards the end of, say, the summer term and so on, that is going to have any meaningful impact on their education whatsoever. I mean, am I wrong? Are these parents wrong to think that? Um, I know. I, I think. I think often they're not wrong. Although, of course, occasionally yeah, there are specific days in the run-up to SATs or GCSEs. Mm. But remember, what we're again. This comes back to the issue is not fundamentally the parent who takes for a few days at the end of term to go on holiday. The issue is that you know we have a large number of of students who are missing one in ten days, who yeah. are off for, you know below ninety percent of the time, and there's actually a stunning number, you know, well in, in the hundreds of thousands who are. Um, absent for you know more more than a quarter of the time mm. and when we get to that though this is a really serious issue this is not about the odd holiday here yeah. and, and unfortunately that is a lot harder to deal with i mean it's very easy to put up the fines and yeah it's a great headline gesture but if you're going to get into the root causes of this then a you've got to be working a lot more with families around um, you know for direct support for parents on some of this you've got to be addressing issues such as mental health but also schools have to do their part with firm behavior policies, which make, means that school is a place where learning matters. Because parents and kids aren't idiots. So if they think and know that they're not learning much at school because it's just a place for messing around, mm. then they'll be a lot less worried about taking a few days off here and there. And those are the, as you say, and those are the kids that I worry about, the ones for whom, you know, that level of absence, of course it's going to have a detrimental impact on, on their education, and let's be honest, probably on their life prospects too. And yet I wonder if sort of the, some schools are, are going after the, the kind of low-hanging fruit, because dealing with a child that is off more than a quarter of the time, you know, that's going to take time, it's going to take effort, it's going to take investment quite probably, and in the support that they need. It's easier to sort of get tough on the kids that have gone on holiday for a week, who don't have have perhaps those underlying issues. I mean, do you think schools are sort of focusing on the, the wrong problem here? Is, should they be focusing less on the, on the kids that are going away for a week and more on the, the children you're talking about? You know, I, I wouldn't want to tie all schools with the same brush here. No. I think, you know, I speak to a lot of head teachers yeah. and they're absolutely head teachers who are doing their absolute best to try and reach out and support those those kids that we're talking about. So, of course, they can't do it alone. You know, they've got to be working with local councils. They've got to be working with health services. Mm. But, yeah, if you ask me, do I think there's a little bit too much, maybe particularly, um, you know, perhaps from, uh, you know, maybe less than those in the coal face, but sort of commentators, a little bit too much pearl clutching about, you know, hardworking parents who are actually just trying to give their family a break yeah. rather than, you know, dealing with those really difficult issues, the kids who it will matter if they're missing 10% of school. And you know, the, the stats for those in year 10 and 11 now are really horrendous. Mm. And that's where we should be putting our attention. Those with persistent absence, not just the odd holiday. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not excusing the odd holiday per se. I'm just saying, you know, let's focus on the kids which really need our help. Why have governments been so uh, intent on on clamping down on parents that are taking kids out of school even for a few days to go on holiday? When did that become such a sort of big political football? Well, you know, it, it, it's something you can't say it's one party or the other. It started under Conservatives, and obviously Labour have just raised the fines mm. here. I think, you know, this is just one of those kind of things. You know, politicians are human, and we all like to look like we're doing something, and we all like to think that we're doing something. And it's easier to change the thing that's under your control. You know, you can raise the fines, and you know, maybe that will do a tiny bit of difference. Maybe that will make a little bit of difference at the margins. But it's much harder to address 
the root causes. And that's something I think, you know, we can all work work on and we can actually say to politicians that we're not looking for the easy answers here. We want you to do the hard stuff and we understand it will take time. But, but you know, meanwhile, meanwhile maybe um, lay off hardworking parents who've just been through a cost of living crisis. I mean, I, I agree with that completely. And I know there will be lots of teachers listening to this probably getting quite irate now because what they often say is it, it's not just about the child that misses out on a few days of education, although they say that does have an impact. Mm. It's about the class. It's about the fact that people have missed different bits and it's quite hard to teach a class where, you know, a decent proportion of the pupils in that room have all been absent at different times and so on. And it's disruptive to everybody else. Is that, is that a fair point? It is a fair point, and I think you know. I think we have to think here about not all absences are equal, really. And I think you hinted at that point yourself earlier. I mean, I think you know, it's absolutely right if um, if a teacher to get annoyed at that if it's in the middle of a term at the class project. But really, you know, again, if you look at the data here, then and you know, if you also just use your common sense and talk to your neighbours, then how many parents actually take the kid out for like? a week in the right in the middle of term it's nearly yeah. the end of term because and, and, they're going and on very holiday few are going to do it we know yeah, in right. most schools and there's not much happening there. and very few are going to do it right before vital exams or so i mean most parents they're not stupid they care about their children's education they've just as you say come to the conclusion that one week off now and again is not going to harm, not going to significantly harm it Exactly. And, you know, there is a parent planning, you know, it's the, it's the um, spring term before the GCSEs and they're saying they want to take those up. Then absolutely, the teachers should be giving them a hard time about that. And that's when the fines, um, you know, are, are a useful remedy here. And I think, you know, one thing just to say that the government has done well is they've made the fines consistent across the country because it used to be a bit of a postcode lottery mm. and that's not fair. And now it's a lot clearer, you know, what you get and where it is and it's just a bit more standardised. So I think that's a good thing. But, um, yeah, but overall... I think a lot of this talk about fines and holidays is a distraction from where the real issue is. And what I would say to everyone, politicians, teachers, you know, let's focus on the kids who really need our help. And just lastly, Ian, I mean, if, if the government really wants to crack down on parents taking children out of school to go away in term time, wouldn't they go after the travel companies that are massively hiking up prices because they know that because of the government's insistence in these fines and so on, they know that parents are, uh, at least in theory, forced to only go away on holidays, and they, they massively profiteer off that. I mean, when that happened with tickets recently with Oasis and so on, dynamic pricing and so on, people got outraged, and yet that's exactly what airlines and hotels hotels and travel companies are doing, isn't it? I'm afraid not to disagree with you here. So I mean, I think this free. is just basic law welcome. of supply and demand. And I think when the government starts stepping into free markets like that, you end up with um, shortages, you end up with rationing queues. I mean, honestly, you know, we have to let the free market operate. And if people want to go away in summer, then that's when the flights and hotels are going to be busier. Um, so no, I, I wouldn't be in favour of government intervention into the free market there. But it is, I mean, it is a form of price gouging, isn't it? No, absolutely not. You know, if more people want to take a, take a plane, then how do you... It's not that they want to. Those, they don't want to. They, they have to, because the education system forces them to. But, but the point is, is there are more people taking that plane, and how do you allocate those seats? You can either have a lottery, you can either have rationing in queues, or in the free market, which is where we live, then you do that with prices. So, um, I, you know, that, that is just how it is, is, is on that one. Um, but, and, you know, government intervention into these things is like rent caps. It almost always makes it worse in the medium term. But, you know, equally, I think you know, the solution isn't, you know, some kind of heavy-handed government price fixing. But it is about, you know, being more understanding to families who have been hard-pressed and need a break. Indeed. Ian, thank you very much indeed. Ian Mansfield, Head of Education and Science at the Policy Exchange, former Special Advisor at the Department for Education. I mean,